Hi everybody. All right, I'm back with the next um, entry in my If I Had One Wish. If I can get it straightened out here, in my If I Had One Wish. So I've decided to go ahead and every maybe every week or until I finish this album, share with you what my wishes are um, in regards to the pictures that I put in here. And I've already picked the next two pages, and they're really cool. But this particular entry, and we'll do it st storyteller style. So grab some coffee or something. <laughs> Sit back and relax. Okay, so this is my next two-page layout. And um, this is obviously isn't done, but let me tell you the titles that are going to go over here is If I Had One Wish, and that's going to go up on top. I just haven't figured out exactly how I want to embellish because this page is going to be for my journaling where I tell the story about the picture. So if I had one wish, it would be I do what I needed to do right now, not later. Sometimes you miss an amazing opportunity. Okay, so I shared this picture the other day, kind of like a little teaser. Um, I found this picture. I took this picture at least nine years ago, I want to say, at least that long. And it's a picture at Disneyland. And I had was just the other night, I was looking for something else. And at the same time, was trying to plan what my next two-page layout was going to be for this book. And I'd already picked some pictures out, but I wasn't... You know, like, I knew I wanted to use them, but I just wasn't, like, 100%. You know how you just get that, that's what I'm going to do type feeling? Okay. So I was looking for an envelope to mail something off in, like a sturdy, and I, I knew I had one. It was, like, a real sturdy, uh, like, a document envelope so that, you know, sturdy so that the, the, the envelope wouldn't, you know, bend or anything. And I had had this darn envelope. <laughs> I'm not, I kid you not. I've had this envelope for so many years, and it's kind of just been like moved around and when I'd organize I'd put stuff here and there so anyways I knew that it was in with my packaging stuff so I go get it and I open it up and this picture comes out and I had totally forgot about this picture and I you know the story the memories came flooding back to me and um anyways it's a beautiful picture with all the meaning behind it which I'll share with you so we'd gone to Disneyland with the kids and we were in line to take pictures with Goofy. And when we were done, we moved off to the side, like up over here or down over here. And I turned, we, well, I turned around and this mom and her little girl were next to take pictures. And so Goofy had been standing upright up until this point. And then when he realized that she was blind, he squatted down and it was so beautiful. The mom was describing to him, to her, everything that was like happening. And Goofy, she was touching his face. She was feeling his face and feeling his nose and feeling his hands. It was so beautiful. It, they were And they were so happy. And I snapped a picture because it was just so touching because I realized um, and it, it, even now you don't always need eyes to see. There's so much more that can be seen with, you know, your heart, with your hands, with what you hear. And so it was really a, a very beautiful, touching moment, and just the joy that was on their faces, you know, the, I mean, the picture's worth a thousand words. So anyways, when they were done, I, I told the mother, and I showed her the picture. I said, I've taken this picture, and I'd love to send it to you. And I know, well, they did live in California, but um, I don't know what nationality she was, because she had like an accent. I want to say maybe like, you know, Portuguese or Brazilian, um, um, some type of Latin and anyways um, she gave me her address and I lost it so I never got to send her this picture and that's why I said sometimes you know you miss an amazing opportunity but anyways that's a picture and then so I just distressed around the edges of this paper and I stamped with this cool stamp set I have it's oops sorry sorry about that it's like arrows and photo corners and stuff so I stamped around with the polka dot one all around the edges right here and then I typed this quote out it's from pa Paolo Coelho it says we can become blind by seeing each day as a similar one each day is a different one each day brings a miracle of its own it's just a matter of paying attention to this miracle so that's you know anyways I thought that was fitting and then I took this stamp it is a stampendous and it's like a like a file marker or tab marker. I don't know what you call these. 
little tabs and I stamped it with the same green to match Goofy's hat and in the middle I stamped the word wishes and then I put these really bright bold eyelets or uh, brads because they match his hat. And then out of the circles from this paper right here I made my own little Mickey. Okay so another story to go along with this with something that I've learned is that um, my twins had to go to speech when they were younger because twins typically are late talkers because they communicate so well with each other they tend to do that instead of communicating with you other than the obvious you know feed me or change me but they were late talkers so for about nine months right before they turned probably was a little over two they started going and I'm not kidding within a month they were like chatterboxes but I go to the same place every week and you see the same people because you have the same you know time slot and so um there was this man there and he was like an older man and his son would come and it turns out his son was autistic and his son at the time was about 13, maybe 14. And so him and I would just get to talking and, you know, we'd be talking and the boys would be racing cars and, you know, crashing into the table with the cars or crashing into his feet. And I would always tell them, stop, don't do that, you know, quit it. And he would say, oh, they're fine. Don't worry about it. And, you know, we'd proceed to talk. And then the, then the next week would come and the, the same thing and the boys would be laughing and running and you know, we wait, waited like in a waiting room where they put a bunch of toys. So how can you not like it, right? How can they not play and run? So anyways, I would do the same thing. Don't stop, you know. So after, I don't know, four, three or four weeks of, of that, one day him and I are talking and I tell them, I tell the boys, they brought out this obnoxious like little train that made tons of noises. I'm like, guys, be quiet. And the dad turns to me and he says, they're boys. They're fine. You know, just leave them. He's like, I hope you're not telling them to not do that because of me. And I said, oh, I, I just didn't want them to bother. He says, and these are so such profound words to me. They really change things for me. He says, as simply as can be, just be grateful that they can. And I never looked at it that way. I never looked at it that way. Shame on me. Um, when you're a mom, some days, don't get me wrong, there's days I want to run screaming out the, the house, you know, I want to gas up the Yukon and head straight for the border and change my name to Martita, don't get me wrong, but I, having twins, having the other five, of course, was challenging too, don't get me wrong about that, but having the twins was one of the hardest things I've ever done, and I remember days when I was like, oh my gosh, because they're just as rambunctious as can be. And I just remember thinking after that, it really changed how, like my perspective, I thought I need to be grateful that they can. And don't get me wrong, I don't let them run amok at restaurants or, you know, what have you. I don't, like if they're acting inappropriately, I deal with it. But I'm grateful that they can. I'm grateful that they can jump. I'm grateful that they can run. I'm grateful that they can yell and, and play cars and crash into each other and run around the yard and chase the dog and ride the scooter and throw lemons across to the neighbor's yard when they're not supposed to. I'm grateful for all those things because my children can. And hats off to you parents that are, you know, a parent of a child, you know, with needs. You know, you guys, I don't hold, I don't hold a candle to you. And I know being a parent from what I, from what I've heard with, um, you know, going to the speech therapy, it, it has its rewards and those children have special qualities that other children don't have but um, be grateful be grateful that your children can so on those days when I'm like oh I just remember that and um, I just remember I'm so grateful I'm so grateful that um, that they're able so anyways yeah that's my story that's my little soapbox um, hope you enjoyed it but I'm really having a great time with this and you're gonna love the pictures that are coming up next uh, this I will just give you a little sneak peek of the paper I'm using. I'm loving. I'm gonna go to Michael's and buy another stack of this paper. I it's fabulous. It's I've had it for so long. It's called Daydreams. If you didn't um, catch that in the other video, but let me just give you a little sneak peek of what I'm using next. But um, yeah, I already have the pictures printed out and I'm all ready to go. So, anyways, you ladies be inspired. Um, tomorrow is first day of school and. In the famous words of Mel Gibson and Braveheart, in the end, freedom! <laughs> yeah.
tomorrow will be my very first day ever in uh, 26 years that all my kids are either out of school or in school and I am flying solo. So anyways, you ladies be inspired. Um, have a most amazing um, day tomorrow and um, come back for the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.